open it up. All right, so welcome y'all. I am so excited. Um, I don't know, I had more uh, signups. We'll see, maybe they will come in a little bit later, but I did decide to live stream on Facebook. So welcome Facebook if you are tuning in as well. So tonight, um, going to be discussing kingdom secrets. Tonight we're doing some kingdom building, y'all. Um, I'm super excited just what the Lord, um, Holy Spirit has been revealing. And um, like I put in my post, it's exposing season, y'all. And this is discussing kingdom secrets that are hidden in plain sight. And for us to, you know, be able to prosper and really utilize, you know, utilize these kingdom secrets. Uh, Matthew 13 and 11 says, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them, right? We all know that Jesus spoke in parables and was understood by his chosen, um, by his chosen and not, you know, to others. Um, and, okay, so um, right here, they all, you know, people always like to know the speaker. So what kind of qualifies you to like, teach us anything. <laughs> Today we are going on a journey, y'all. Um, honey, hot tea. I like hot tea is the acronym I've been using. Just from a previous church, the pastor's like, you know, hot is honest, open, and transparent. That is what, you know, we're giving you tonight. Honest, open, and transparent. And, you know, we serve in the tea too. And T is transformation, okay? Enlightenment and application. Enlightenment is having the knowledge, right? Like we just read um, from the scripture, right? Um, it's in regards to having the knowledge. And it's not enough just to have the knowledge of information, right? Um, a, transfer, a transformation needs to take place and that's understanding. So you have the knowledge, but fully understand, you know, what's being revealed to you and application, which is when wisdom, how do I apply this? How does this apply, right, to my life? Here in the gospel of the kingdom is not enough. One must understand it, right? And then allow it to bear fruit. We got to allow it to bear fruit in our life. And that's Matthew 13, 18 through 23. So you see the list, um, nurse, health advocate, scratch all the titles. You guys, I am a kingdom ambassador and I am so like honored to be here before you tonight. Um, sharing his word, sharing his word, kingdom. I mean, it, it's here, it's available, right? And just a, a quick backstory. So, you know, it, holistic care and wellness um, is a faith-based private nursing concierge service. And we specialize in healing holistically. Yes, I do spell it with a W. Um, because it's healing the whole person, which is body, soul, and spirit. And I began, you know, kind of within the uh, pandemic is actually when I um, started um, holistic care and wellness and just kind of a different approach. You know, you have patients that come into the hospital. Um, I don't know, have you guys ever like been into the hospital and you're going like for the same thing over and over? You're like, okay, I got stomach pain. And you go in, no, all your tests are clear. Your blood work is normal. Your chest x-ray, I mean, your, um, your abdominal x-ray, CT scan, everything is normal. They can't find out exactly, you know, what's going on. And so like my approach, a lot of people don't realize a lot of health conditions are spiritual in nature, you know, not necessarily like the physical. So that's why you kind of don't have that understanding. And we're going to like kind of go in, you know, a little in depth and kind of talk about that. Think about it. When Jesus was healing, you know, um, on earth, it was, he was healing unclean spirit is what he was healing, you know, as he, you know, by your faith, you're made whole, 
you know, he was, he was mainly healing unclean spirits and just to know and recognize all of the three are interconnected. It goes together. You know, if one is out of whack, it, it affects um, the other, right? It affects the other. So I just want to encourage, I don't know what pandemic that you're going through in your life right now, but no, you can walk out walk out like the Hebrew boys, not smelling like smoke. That is exactly how I felt um, on the front lines with COVID. God, whew, so amazing, truly reveals, truly reveals himself. And, you know, the main thing that he taught, everything that we go through positions us. It sets us up for our greatness. It really does. It positions us for purpose. So we have to treasure, treasure those scars and, you know, the pain, use it as an anchor, you know, the hurt, you know, the scar, the shame today is the crown for tomorrow. And that is what he reminds me always. So of course, we always got to know, you know, the understanding of what we have planned. So our agenda over the next few days, um, day today actually going through the principles right um and you see kind of the elderly hand um you know kind of like you know with us you know new new age you know the new generation i should say um you know it's always you know a new way to do things things are always changing things are always evolving but it's like you know if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Things that worked in the past, it actually works today. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it's his principles, right, that we should be leaning on. Like, you know, day two promises, right, his word. What does his word say? We can lean on the promises of God. It's yes and amen. Day three is going to be prophecy. We're going to go over um prophecy so what to expect you know what i mean in the future things that are written a four time it's for our learning so you know when and will we you know kind of the same when, when i'm reading the bible when reading the bible we're looking for principles promises and prophecies and the fourth p is how is it practical like how does this apply to me you know it's not just ancient time like okay so what can i learn from this how can i apply this to my my life right and honestly we can no longer afford to lack the knowledge of his power his promises and his principles we can't we can no longer afford especially the season that we're in is so much, you know, important now, you know, to really know what to expect, how to walk in it. A lot of times people are waiting on things to go back to normal. Nothing's good. It wasn't working for us. You know, the quote unquote normal, it, 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 it wasn't working. We're not going back to the way things were, right? And so, this is a time together just to empower you, encourage you, you know, for us to know our rights and our God-given authority that we have. Oh, sorry, I'm going to see. Yep, practicality does matter. So let's learn, I'm glad you said that, let's learn how to practically apply all of these, the principles, the promises, the prophecy, right? Apply it for power and purpose in our daily life, daily life, you know? All right, so here we are. Let's see, we're going to get started. Day one, like I said, is principles. Kind of think of it, I like to think of it in regards to this, like a court of law, right? So you have a lawyer, right? Lawyers have to learn laws of the land, right? And, you know, they got to know how, they got to know when to use those laws, right? They got to know how to quote it, cite it when pleading a case, right? So you don't want to have, you know, got a case before you regarding kidnapping and he come in with laws trying to fight the case based on somebody stealing. <laughs> like, no, you got to know how to apply the right arguments, right? Laws, decrees, it needs to be appropriate enough to win the case. 
it needs to be appropriate enough to win the case. And what is the term that they use? Um, what is the term that they use now? Um, beyond a reasonable doubt, <laughs> right? That's one of the terms that they use, right? Think about it. So say for instance, you know what I mean? You ride on the freeway, you know, uh, riding on the freeway and you ain't seen no sign. You ain't even see, seen the speed limit sign, but you like ignorantly driving 90 on the highway and it's a 55, right? It's a 55. Don't think that you won't get stopped and get a ticket like the he ain't gonna pull you over and your best defense is basically, oh, I ain't know, I ain't seen no signs I do, right? So I think of it kind of in the same context in regards to like, you know, God's principles. And know this, once God establishes a biblical principle and a precedence, meaning like priority, like he sets precedence, precedence over this he never violates it he will never violate his principles so it's important that we really dive in like we need to know you know what I mean we need to know what his word says what his love and I'm gonna tell you tonight it ain't no basic you know what I mean a lot of times like oh you're going over the ten commandments no because we should know that's like, you know what I mean? 101, we should know that. And technically in the word, there's over 600 commandments that we should follow. And that's how we have trouble just with the 10, but there's over 600, like 613, 611, something like that commandments, right? That's in the word. No, we're diving in into his principles, the secrets that are hidden in plain sight that gives us revelation that it's something in the now that you can really use. And it's important that we not only know, right, but understand and know how to apply to our lives. I'm sorry, I'm gonna check the text to the same time. Hey, period, God's law and order. <laughs> Whole truth is nothing but the truth. That is true, right hand on the Bible. <laughs> so I always like to start with a mindset shift. Really like, now, you know, it's a kingdom mindset shift that we're going to do. You know, the word says, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Not he shall be. No, so is he. Honestly, like it's important to stay, it's important to stay with God. Think about this. Anywhere that your mind goes, your body will eventually follow. Your body will follow. So think about it. If you have your mind, say in the promised land, even in your even if your body is like, say, still in Egypt, you know, you're still back in Egypt, right? Your mind will force your body to follow to the promised land. You know, honestly, I feel like with the children, you know, the Israelites, children of Israel, their mind was still in Egypt. And we know how that turned out, right? They, you know, the fear, so afraid, you know, in our own eyes, this is how we see because your actions and it's going to follow in that way, right? So where, where you say, for instance, like right now, where your future body, right? Your future, where your future body, like, you know, say can't enter now, send your mind there, send your mind there. Your mind will, will literally direct your body, right? <laughs> like it's ushering into the reality. We have to think, really think along those lines, right? Anything your body's taught, your body, you know what I mean? Your mind is caught, your body is going to express it. So this is about transformation of mind. It is about a relationship and not religion. I really want to stress that. It is about a relationship with God and not religion. Let me tell you, religion, it wastes that. Yeah, y'all, oh, y'all might feel some way when I say this, but thank you, Holy Spirit. Religion wastes all your time getting you to do makeovers, right? On a dead corpse. Think about it. The old man, I mean, I'm talking about the old you, right? It gets you to do makeovers. It's almost like, you know, kind of like the walking dead. Keep it buried. It gets you to say, you know, 
you know, the sin, try to, it's the sin or the legalistic, the ritual of the law, you know, and I'm not talking about like abiding by his law, but you know, all of these different things and bylaws they come up with, just like the Pharisees and the scribes, you so, you know what I mean? Legalistic in all your ways that you can't even experience Jesus who's right in front of you, the God that is right before you. Is we need to have intimacy. We need to know God. We need to know God and know his kingdom, right? We need to know that. It's time out for, you know what I mean? Oh, well, you know, if you just do this or do less of that, you know what I mean? Do maybe do a little bit less than that. No, quit trying to revive, you know what I mean? Doing makeovers, you know what I mean? You know, you got a whole bunch of stuff going on inside and you just, you know what I mean? Trying to just like cover it up. You know what I mean? I'm going to try to do less of that. It doesn't help. You know, did you know that being close to God is actually living in reality? Think about that. Being close to God is actually living in reality. Because those, you know, those who believe and trust in human power, that's living in a world of fantasy. It's a facade. You know, it's time to get out of the matrix. I'm being honest. It's like his remnant, the Lord's remnant is here. It is revival. See, it is an exposing season. There is a transfer that is going on. Things that you thought, right? Things that you thought. It's not, yeah, it's not all that. Let's think about it. I'm saying we're talking about hidden in plain sight, right? Heart, thoughts, mind are all connected. Yes, it is. And manifest in the physical. Religion band-aids. I like that. <laughs> but doesn't heal. Yes, the root at the heart. You better say it. Holy Spirit, you better say it. So think about it. When is it hidden in plain sight? Think about, and I mean, it's, we're talking about practical, right? Think about it. You have a television. That big black box right television just in the name it tells you in the name y'all what does it do it tells a vision deception mostly right you got your remote control right what do you do when you hit on it you click on it it takes you to a guide a guide it takes you to a guide and what does that guy do what does it feel with programming takes you to a guy to get programmed, right? You're worse now, you know, and then now what they're showing is just like, woo, it is in your face with it. Like it ain't no secret. It's in your face. I'm talking about all out in the open, the, the deception, right? And then you got reality shows that is far, let's say far from reality, y'all. <laughs> He ain't really popping like that, but you know, that's a popping, they popping, right? Think about sports. A lot of people take up a lot of time on sports. And hey, honestly, it's just like, this is just to enlighten. You know, we know more of stats in sports than we know our own stats. Like for real, for real. It's like, you know, we know, <laughs> don't get me started, music, right? Music. You have folks selling their souls and stuff. They do. It happens. It is just what it is. You ne never heard me say, man, his first album, when he came out, it was lit. It was fire. But you notice over, oh, it's changed. You know, you hear they having their songs, you know, talk about, I'm on, we on demon time. Got songs like it's out in the open. It is in your face. It is in your face. They're letting you know what's what. And again, let's not even be, come on now, we gonna, if we're keeping it real, giving the tea, it's hot. We're going to be honest, open, and transparent. Your favorite pastors and gospel singers, y'all see what's out there? Y'all already see it is exposing, it's exposing season. That is exactly what it is. You can't hide no more. When it talks about revelation, a lot of people, you know, it's always, oh, the end of the world type deal. No, you know, revelation is unveiling. It is the unveiling of Christ. That's what it is, is unveiling. 
And guess what? You guys, all of this, all of this, it's just, it's revealing, revealing. The word is active and powerful. Ain't no hide no more. Ain't no hiding. We just have to open our eyes, right? We just need to open our eyes and our spirit to what is like right in front of us. Ain't even gonna get started on social media, you know, because uh, you know, trying to get the angles right, fake it till you make it mentality, like all of that, all of that. And it's sad because false info, right? False info is so common now and it's accepted as truth. It's accepted as truth. And then you know how it spread like wildfire, all the nonsense. Like I say, woe to those who call evil good and to those who, call, you know what I mean? Call good evil. Woe unto those. Fake news. You got fake prophets. We keeping it real. That wreck havoc. Okay. Wreck havoc on society to unsuspecting, even unsuspecting followers of Christ, right? We got to realize, y'all, it's wolves in sheep clothing out there. Just because it's white don't mean it's right. I'll never forget a patient actually said that <laughs> on one of my shifts and it had me dying laughing. She was talking to her, just because it's white don't mean you right. Like, let's just be honest. You know, everything ain't sugar and sweet. Everything ain't sugar and sweet. Everybody ain't your partner. Everybody ain't your friend, okay? We take folks' word as law and Bible. We take folks' word as law and Bible. And I'm just gonna let y'all know. I'm, because, and I'm, I'm expressing based on my experience. We're keeping it hot, open, and transparent. I need y'all to think about this because I provide education to patients nonstop. Y'all know how it is. It takes folks, honey, the doctor can't do no wrong, right? Doctor can't, uh uh. Granny and then Miss Tina and then said, uh -uh, no, honey, y'all, there are terrorists in medical school. There are terrorists who have went through medical school. There are terrorists who are in med medical school right now. Good grades, A's all the way through, just like scientists, A's all the way through, but they say in agents, you have to test the spirit by the spirit. And you see, you know, and then I'm, I could go on for days in regards. And not only that, y'all, it's like other professions. Let's just be real. He got his agents and his minions roaming around seeing whom, right, whom they can devour. You got scientists now, the CEN opening up portals and stuff. The activity is going on. I'm just saying, hidden in plain sight, but our eyes ain't open enough to see you know what I mean? And then, I mean, really? Like, thinking about it, y'all, like, ministry to the heart needs to be done because, honestly, it's issues of the heart. So we can't just have head knowledge of it. We have to move beyond the head knowledge of it. No percent higher. Here you are, brother. <laughs> All right, so our next one is Okay, we've all heard this, Hosea 4 and 6, right? My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. A lot of times we just end it there. But the full scripture, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also reject you as my priest because you have ignored the law of your God. I also will ignore your children. Remember what we said earlier, like when, when God say he, ain't gonna, he is not going to violate his laws, his precepts, his principles. He won't. He will not. I'm going to tell you, honestly, if it's up to the flesh and we keeping it real, if it's up to the flesh, it will always choose for us to do other things. Have fun. Do what makes you feel good. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got number one life to live, boo. Okay. We get them dopamine hits scrolling on social media, all kind of lust of the flesh, right? All the temporary feel good, but we avoid, you know, taking the time to actually learn, right? To actually learn. Romans 13, 14 says, leave no provision for the flesh. And we got to understand, ain't safe, ain't safe out here. It's time 
Yeah, we, it's a must. It's a must that we discover truth, right? For our life and for progress, it's essential that we do. You know, we have to overcome the flesh by walking in the spirit. It's a must. But the good news, I should say and, not but. And the good news though, how merciful and wonderful he is. Proverbs 11, 9 says, but through knowledge, right? Knowledge, discernment, the righteous or the just shall be delivered. You will have escape, right? Take the time to learn. We need to know our God. We need to know the king and we need to know the kingdom. It's important. We need to be meditating on our word daily. All right. So, you know, a lot of people like the ob objectives, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what we gonna be talking about today. Y'all, spiritual law is spiritual law. Whether you, you like it or not, you believe it or not, let me tell you, the invisible kingdom, okay, is more real than the physical. And until we really get that in our spirit, it's always gonna be, you know what I mean? Like havoc right? We need to recognize that you better, and when I say spiritual law, spiritual law, you better leave, believe Satan and his minions use it. What? What? You think incantations and stuff ain't taking place? It just be, you know what I mean? Followers of Christ, we sit back, you know what I mean? We just sitting back, just letting them roam, letting them rule when that ain't never how it was meant to be. We got to take our rightful position it's no longer time to be walking around with our eyes wide shut. We cannot afford it. We cannot afford it any longer. So we got to understand the power of principles. This is the objective. Understand the power of principles. Learn and return to the ancient paths. It was so beautiful as I was like learning this. And then my favorite, a little bonus at the end, experience the, the secret to releasing prosperity. Y'all, it's all hidden in plain sight. It's all hidden in plain sight. But we know knowledge, hit, hit, like we're the exemption, God's children. He makes it available to us. It's there, have Holy Spirit God, but it's there, plain sight. So our main our main focus tonight is really driving in our first kingdom secret is life is spiritual. Because for real, for real, for real, life is spiritual. You know, the spiritual realm is only a parallel to the physical, like the natural, what we experience. It's already, by the time you see what you see in your life, in the physical it's already taking place in the spiritual. Like we got to get into, you know what I mean? Like get into the, the battle. Like, as you see in the background here, y'all, it's chess, not checkers. You better believe the enemy. He know the word better than some, you know what I mean? Followers of Christ, some kingdom citizens. He know the word and he use it. When I mentioned before about, you know, think of the principles like a court of law, right? That's what it is. Enter my courts, enter my gates and my courts, right? That's what it is. He is an accuser that goes, hey, you know, they violated this. You know what I mean? And we in that right standing. So what he say, you know what I mean? It's saying it's against the law, his God's principles. You know what I mean? That we're not abiding by. So again, whether we like it or not, we find ourselves in a spiritual battle. It's time that we get kingdom strategies because it's, you know, spiritual warfare, whether we like it or not. We've been chosen for a time like this, though. A lot of times, you know, I, I ask the question. So do you believe that everything happens for a reason? Ask that question. Do you believe that everything happens for a reason? Because some is like, you know, just look. Yes, you're right. It does everything there is a reason behind everything that we go through everything you know some it's um hold on i can't really see 
Uh oh. Oh. Um, I don't know how to. Okay. Yeah, it looks like everything is showing up, Casey. I don't know what I must have done something to my. Um, yeah, I must have done something to my. I'll figure it out. Okay. So, yes, there is a reason behind everything that we go through. And a lot of times, our thing is, you know, it's like, it's one of two things that we always kind of gear toward. Like, we be like, God caused this to happen in my life. He responsible. How dare he, you know, be so quick, you know what I mean, to go to that, you know, or do, does the enemy play any part in it? Do we take, you know what I mean, responsibility for any of our part in it, you know? And honestly, like most of us are fighting the wrong battle. Y'all, I mean, just think about you and your, your boxing stands with your hands, you guard your face, you guard your grill, a little bit of your torso, you just take a hit after hit on the side. Just, you know what I mean? You take a hit after hit. You got, man, you go, you know what I mean? You gonna strike, you gonna, did you even pinch? The, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gonna throw the hands on what you gonna do? You just sitting there. The power is within you, but you just go, I mean, you up against the rope and he wearing you out. Wear, be wearing us out, right? We gotta realize it's not by power or might, but by the spirit that is how we fight our battles. And that's Zechariah 4, 4, 6, right? I'm gonna tell you, it is no more, and this has been the mentality, well, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like? It just is what it is. And we had that mentality, we don't even get in the fight. We don't even get in the battle. Like, you know what I'm saying? Chess, uh, you know, chess not checking, honey, some, some, some of us playing candy land on these kitty games. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, all wrong. We better recognize the schemes, the plots, the tricks, the manipulation, all of that of the enemy, all of that. So I always like to have like a call of action. I'm learning how, you know what I mean? Have a call of action. Like it's time that we have a house of prayer, right? to be able to operate, really, you know what I mean? And that, the house of prayer, it's kind of like, like a government to represent the culture, people that are gonna stand up, right? Be a nation before God, establish those covenants for resolution in our nation, right? Think about it, when the nation, when the nation is sick, it trickled to all of our individual lives. Our problem be, we just be, you know what I mean? Well, let me see what I can do really in our personal lives. You know what I mean? Individual. Hey, if we can get this taken care of corporately, that trickles down. You know what I mean? It really trickles down. Like our, our decisions, right? All of our decisions like determine, it really determines. So what are we going to stand up? What are we going to stand up on? Think about it. And when I say a house of prayer, I mean, from, from the Bible, think about Sodom and Gomorrah, how they were destroyed. I'm talking about a whole town, a whole land. They were destroyed. You know what? Abraham was pleading because, you know, Lot was all up in there, whatever, you know, his folks or whatever. And, you know, he kept, was like, well, what if you find 10? I mean, how about five, God? You know, it kept going. God and now his Cyrus, he already knew. They was wilding. It, the cries came up to, they was wilding. They far from, he didn't find not one. Think about it. He couldn't find not one in there. No house of prayer. No one that was pleading on that, that, that city, that town, that nation's behalf. They straight wild and you got to go. That is a perfect example. He destroyed it all. Can't even find the house of prayer. Ain't nobody praying. Ain't nobody, you know what I mean? I'm talking about reckless, straight reckless. So time is of the essence, y'all. It is time. We need to understand and engage the principles of the kingdom. Y'all, it's up to the church to take our place. It's time we take our place in the realm of the spirit. 
Exodus 33, 13 through 14, teach me your way so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. You know what the Lord replied and said? My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. This one, he was talking to Moses, y'all. You know, because Moses was like, if your presence don't go, if you don't go with us, don't send me. Don't send me. We need to have that same attitude. No more shadow boxing, right? Why you bringing gloves to a spiritual fight anyway? Bobbing and weaving, stumbling and staggering through life. We go through one problem or disaster after another, after another, right? Like we got to get to the point where like, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. And understand this, when God says something, he means it. He does it. He keeps to his word and he stands by his laws. Like he bound by covenant. He ain't finna renege, you know what I mean? He, he ain't finna renege at all. He ain't finna do it. You better believe it. Wait enough time, it'll probably be revealed by spirit. For sure, for sure. All right. So power principles. Here are the five we're going to run through. So foundations. We're going to go over foundations, identity, and destiny, which is essential. It's like that, that starting point, you know? Ancient paths, dominion, and then a little bonus at the end, ancient spiritual technology. You know, we like our technology now, but y'all better bet, you know what I mean? In the day, you better use the ancient spiritual technology and still apply to us today. I pray God open our spiritual eyes, Lord, that we may see revealed to us. Open our ears that we may hear, Lord, and give us understanding, says in all you're getting, get understanding, Lord. Transform us tonight. All right, first is faulty foundations. Matthew 4, 24, 27 says, without a, so without a solid foundation, a building cannot stand. Think about it. You know, you know, contractors working on house and that. You know what I mean? You ain't gonna put no quicksand down there, right? I think what well, they use like concrete or something. But just like they're using wood and nails, you nailing all that down, and then all of a sudden you run the nails. You ain't gonna go and grab no hot glue gun, or at least I hope not. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's that one that the gorilla glue? You, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just saying so. We need a solid foundation. Even Christ gave the example. You ain't going to build your house. You know what I mean? And on sand, it was sand. Storms come and wash you through. It ain't no good. You need a solid foundation. You know, life and our future depend on having that solid spiritual foundation. We already went over that nothing happens without reason, right? James 4, 2 and 3 it says you fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Sometimes we don't even ask, but guess what that verse goes on to say? You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss is what it says. And that's basically a lot of times we don't realize that we have a faulty foundation. We don't recognize that right off, right? And we were talking about this earlier, like we have to get to the root cause. What is the root cause of our bondage, right? Sometimes it's usually not even our fault. It's curses that we've inherited that's been passed down from our ancestors, from our forefathers, you know what I mean? The main one is idols, right? We always think, oh, this graven image, but there are so many things that can be idols in our life, you know what I mean? That picture, that Say for instance, that, that piece of jewelry, you know, that grandma, 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 and them, great, great, great passed down. And you know, they didn't sacrifice, put it on the altar so granny can get ahead. You know what I mean? When she was going through, sometimes they even enter into stuff they don't even know. It's unknown to them. You know what I mean? But never knowing, hey, oh, this was sacrifice or something. You know what I mean? Like, no, this was sacrifice. Back in the day when they was, you know, fussing and fighting over land, some other family done put a curse on this whole family based on them. You know, what I mean? so many different things, right? 
these evil covenants, altars that are erected, right? Demonic covenants um, that's possessed, people using divination, right? Kind of like the magic or based on, okay, so, you know, you did this in the past, this kind of happened in the past type deal. So, you know, I'm kind of going to foretell, kind of like a fortune teller that possibly this might be what happened. Come on now. Go to God, allow Holy Spirit to reveal to you. And you better know that there are human agents out here, right? Even something so simple as fraternity and sororities, you would never think. But you know, some of them, it's to Minerva. They are offering those incantations, those, you know, what they cite, those songs. That's to Minerva. And it may sound so much holy, you know what I mean? Like they really you know, using Bible, but misusing Bible, if that even makes sense, right? It could be a city or a hometown that's been cursed, right? Trent even have, and this, we're talking about like a cult practice and involvement, sowing, what you, sowing and reaping, right? Like I said, again, sometimes it's not even based on you or what you've done, but we have to recognize that. You know what I mean? Sometimes like, I'm doing right. You know what I mean? I'm doing, doing right, God. I'm praying, fasting, I'm reading my word, I'm being consistent with it, but why I'm just not seeing no breakthrough, why is this, you know what I mean, this heavy, it's consistent, we better check, you know what I mean, like check our foundation, right, and we already know so many other things, how, you know, these things are, demonic possessions, or evil spirits are transferred through sex and soul ties, be careful who you're sleeping with you don't know what's attached you know what I mean so then we have to think about those things too people you let lay hands on you when you think what come on now y'all think about this and when this was revealed to me I was just like whoa this is crazy like just say for instance like the womb right when a mother gives birth to a child do y'all know that some people be sacrificing placentas and stuff which like, have you ever asked, like, when your child was born, like, oh, how do y'all dispose of the placenta? Like, what do you do with it? Y'all, they be taking them to fetish priests and stuff, like, all kind of stuff. And you would never think about this. Ladies, what about, well, I should say ladies and men, the beauty salon you go to, barbershop you go to, your hair, when they cut your hair, how do they dispose of your hair? Some of you be wondering why you going back. Like, I ain't gonna pay my bills. I'm gonna go get my hair done. What? For real? You better say it. You don't even know. They didn't, you know, you didn't join in the witchcraft based on that. Even unknowns to you. You got your hair all up on the altar. You know what I mean? For their business to be successful and you coming back, they got customers like crazy. We have to destroy those, you know? We have to. And I'm just gonna say it because we got the witchcraft holiday coming up now, Halloween, aka All Hallows Ween. Think about it, y'all, between the 15th and 31st, it's so many human sacrifices going on, it's right in your face, but they ain't going, like, you know what I mean? We kind of look over that, it, it's, it's a fact, it's true. Think about even food, y'all, since we're talking about that candy, We just take our kids, all these different, you know what I mean, spots. You never know. You don't know. And it's sad. You know, churches got trunk or treat night. Hallelujah night. This is a witchcraft holiday. It don't matter how long you've been practicing. It seems like it's just, you know what I mean? Let me get dressed up. Let me wear my mask for the day. You know what I'm saying? I would be my favorite character. And it seems simple, but it is an occult practice is witchcraft we have to call it what it is and then even restaurants a lot of times I used to even be like I mean once I pray over my food type deal like <laughs> something else gonna hit me before but you got a witch that's in there cooking then sacrifice you know what I mean to get her and it happens it happens over your food pray over that food Honey, baby showers, weddings, you better pray over them gifts that they're giving your baby or you and your husband, your wife, you know, doing y'all celebratory time. Because sometimes it be curses on them things. It like, just call it what it is. Books, you know what I mean? It'd be some of the popular books that's out there. It says, if the, Psalm 11 and three, if the foundations be destroyed, that means you got a faulty foundation. What can the righteous do? 
that is a bold statement. So, you know, it hangs against us. Again, he honors covenants. So you don't came, whether no one or not, you don't came and come. That's why we have to pray. Holy Spirit has to guide us. If you've come into agreement with the covenant, you got to abolish that. You, you got to pray and have that, you know, void, nullify, rid that, you know, like got to pray. Cause we already know what the scripture says that the sins of the father goes down to the third and fourth generation, right? Think about that. Like really like think about that. And, you know, um, think about, it. okay, we're going to take his scripture, you know, suffering due to ignorance of the source of our troubles. Think about Abraham. And we already know he was a friend of God. Abraham was righteous. He was pleasing to God. Like God, remember I was talking about earlier with Sodom and the Lord, like God would go to him, you know what I mean? Break bread and talk to him. Sometimes even before he move on what he doing, he would take, you know what I mean? Kind of advice like, Lord, let me please just hold off on that type deal. We know that Abraham and Sarah, remember she was barren. They were having a hard time, right? Having a hard time conceiving. Do we remember that his father, Tara, his father was an idol worshiper. His, Abraham's father was an idol worshiper. The sins go down three, four generations, right? Four generations. So even before Tara, like, you know, his father, then his father, they were having eight kids at 20, you know, kind of like the normal range, 29 to 35, 35, I think was the highest that, you know, one of the, you know, forefathers had their kids. When Tara had Abraham, he was 70 years old, seven zero. He was 70 years old. It hit Abraham. You know, he was praying to God, righteous and everything, never knowing about, you know what I mean? To take that into account in regards to the, the the faulty foundation. You know, God told him, come out of your land to the land that I will show you. He did it. Obedient, willing, obedient. Bam, bam, let's do it. I'm living for you, Lord, but never recognizing that faulty foundation, right? And even after him, if we think about it, even um, Isaac, he didn't have until, I mean, I think they were buried maybe 20, 25 years or something. Um, and then his son, um, who was it? Abraham, I, Jacob, he, they were barren 20 years. It, it kept going down, but that's what I'm saying. It still, tri you know, trickled down through the generations where it was like an extended amount of time, right? Think about it. His father, even idol worship, it's crazy. They had the spirit of lying. Abraham and Sarah, when they went in, they was going into Egypt, whatever. Saying is my sister. When his son came through, him and his wife, Rebecca, um who was it Isaac um they did kind of went into the city too talking about my sister just lying and we already know Jacob he stole his brother whole stole his whole birthright he he was king of lying right king king of lying and we know how it ended up for his children because they sold Joseph right <laughs> put him in a well they sold him to slavery like trickled down through the generations and we know generation like you got to note the patterns generation generation like four generations that's like 400 years or so you know and we pray and we got to realize so you got a mom you got a dad they got you know what I mean so you got a mom your mom has a mom and dad so you got two there then your dad he has mom and a dad so you going back all those generations that's like 30 people you need to be praying like don't let it hit me lord whatever they done sacrifice, you know what I mean? And sometimes, I mean, it's certain things like the spirit of poverty, the spirit of lack, you know what I mean? Continue down the generation, an absent father, there's early death in the family, sickness, certain diseases, like no success. We have to pray over our foundation. We got to ask ourselves, like, have my foundation been tampered with? Has it been tampered with? And again, the call to action is we need to do a thorough you know, thoroughly like examine our life and our situation and the family. So what am I seeing there? Like what's happening? Oh, this been happening with her, like at the age of this, you know what I mean? Like all the men type deal in the family. And then you know that there's a problem and what needs to be prayed for. Ask the Holy Spirit to like reveal. And the key is pray for deliverance 
during this time to break those covenants that have us bound, right? And God is so merciful that he'll set us free. Holy Spirit will deal with it all. He will deal with it all. A lot of times, you know what the issue be? We be like, we get saved. Oh, salvation, you know what I mean? You felt the spirit come over you, you know what I mean? You in church or wherever you are, you know, you receive the word, you feel him, you accept him in your heart. You know, make it baptized on a week later, a couple of weeks later. And then we just sit back and we just be like, I'm cool. Like I'm going to heaven type deal. This is it. That's what's up. Yo, no, we can't sit back and get lax. They say work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It ain't the time to be lax. Like, and that's what a lot of times why we don't experience heaven on earth. But that's what his word says that we can experience heaven on earth. You, we ain't got to wait till we get to heaven to experience heaven. We can experience it in the here and in the now. That's when we should be experiencing. We have to pray for deliverance over these things. Don't let it just stop at salvation. Like, oh, it's a momentary thing. Oh, one time, one and done type thing. No. I mean, if we're really serious about it, right? And understand that he keeps his words and he stands by it, period, period. He is able to deliver. All right, with the ancient past, sorry, y'all, I feel like I am going over. I did start a little bit late. So um, in regards to this, Jeremiah 6 and 16 says, thus says the Lord, stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is, the good way and walk in it and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. That's what they said. We ain't gonna walk in it. Huh. Ancient means like hidden. It's the timeless. It's the eternity, um, eternal. That's what ancient is. The good way, y'all, this means prosperous, to be prosperous and pleasant and cheerful and excellent, right? We already talked about how the spiritual and the physical um, parallels, right? So think about this the ancient past. Since the ancient time, it's like the world has really, you know what I mean? Their agenda has been to systemically eliminate God's ways. And these are things that he set up, you know what I mean? The path that he set up for us, right? To be prosperous, to have, you know, the joy to walk in the, in the good ways. It's been like systemically eliminated all over the place that affects society. You know what I mean? On the personal level, family life, and that spiritual, emotional, financial health wise, like we straight up be in survival mode nowadays. I'm just trying to survive. I'm drowning over here. I just want to keep my head above water. That's how it be, you know? So God is ancient paths. It's you know, the sacrificial living is turned to selfishness. You know, everybody greed, you know what I mean? The greed and the deceit, right? Jeremiah 6, 13. So with scriptures before this, it says everyone is, it says everyone is greedy for gain and deals falsely. Don't even know how to blush anymore. Like it's become the norm, you know, it's become the norm. So the ancient past, the three F's, father, family, and future. Parents are the gatekeepers and the strong man. Like that, that was the protection, the family, you know, the father being the priest, you know, of the home, right? And then family, having that family structure, right? And the father played a, a significant role. Um, another scripture, I, I can't, I don't remember the verse, but it talks about the strong man, like who can um, plunder the home of a strong man unless you bind the strong man. And that's really what's happened, especially like with the, the, the fathers, right? Whole agenda, get the fathers out the home, the single parent, like everywhere you look, like that has been the agenda, like, like for so long, because it's that protective measure, right? It, um, the protective measures and then it's about in the lives of the children. The children are the future. You know, the lives of the children for blessing. There are certain times 
And that's why I have below from curse to blessing. There are literally seven stages in which the parents, right, in a child's life is supposed to, you know, bless the ancient path, seven stages in which the father, the mother, the parents are supposed to bless the child, right? So it's about um, blessing the child up into adulthood because they've systemically eliminated that structure, we have, you know, the kids that are exposed to all kinds of curses, right? Then we have adults who have walls built up, you know, hurt, you know what I mean? You know, protecting ourselves not to get hurt again, but then we keep in love out. And that's, you know, the love of God as well, which we don't really, you know what I mean, recognize right, right offhand. We really don't. And um I feel like, I don't know. I feel like too, a lot of times the structure, what they say is the norm. Everybody out here trying to prove themselves. Like, you know what I mean? But understand, like, ain't no funds to prove. Like, we kind of keep it real, no hiding. This is what is hit. I mean, it's right in our face, right? It's right in our face, but, you know, trying to prove I can be an independent woman. Duh, duh, duh. I can raise them type deal. But like, it's time we go from curse to blessing, right? The blessing, like it's, it's about provisions that security, you know, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, all the way around, right? And so the seven stages that the child should, you know, should be blessed is conception, right? Time of conception, in utero, so when in the womb, right? At birth, when the child is born, in infancy, right? When they reach puberty and all of these ancient paths were literally God instilled it in culture, in different cultures where it should happen. Like we hear about like the bar mitzvah at the age of puberty and stuff like that. Like, but he instilled this in cult. This is how, this is the ancient way. So at puberty, and then the father gives the blessing at marriage. And then the seventh stage is an older age. But because, you know, the father, and then sometimes it can be the male figure or role model that can still, once you know the blessing should take place, that can, you know, begin to initiate and speak life, right? And what this does is, as you can see below, it's about identity and destiny. You're speaking identity and destiny into your, you know, your kids' lives. The thing is, we always talk about, you know, like get it out the mud, right? So we got to get it out the mud so our kids don't have to, right? They don't have to go through the pain and the destruction that we did. But understand this, we can only minister at the point in which we've been healed or at the point that we have received wholeness, right? That is the only way. And a lot of times, like we're dealing with so much, right? It says, um, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Only our spirit, because so at that that new man, it's it's renewing the spirit. Remember, we talked about we talked about the body, the soul, and the spirit. It's that spirit, man, because the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. We become the throne of the Holy Spirit, which means in becoming the throne of the Holy Spirit, right? Like that means it's his presence that connects us to heaven, right? Like we have, we have habitation in the heavens. That's what connects us to the heaven. So it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, right? That's the spirit that becomes alive because it replaces the sinful nature, right? It, it replaces sinful nature and we're replaced with the very nature of God himself. And then the, it goes on to say, the old things are passed away. Behold, all things come new. Understand the body and the soul is still open to attacks. That's why we have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, right? The body and the soul are open, right? Time out for all the superficial healing. We want all the instant, you know what I mean? Short-term fixes. I want to I just turn, I want to turn up, you know what I mean? At the same, we're trying to avoid pain and we just, you know, we want to turn up, you know, get my happy, right? It's going to fix it temporarily, but we don't realize, right? 
that very seed of that short-term fix is what destroys us in the long run. It is what destroys us in the long run. So it's like ancient paths have been torn down and abandoned in our culture. And, you know, honestly, it's time that we do something about it. Why still suffer in setbacks and poverty, hard and frustrated, right? Inflicted by these demons. Remember, it's spiritual. Life is spiritual. And it's like the further away that we depart from God's original ways, you know, like really like the shorter our lifespan too. I don't even think I talk about that. In addition, like complicated life, but like even in the days of no, like they were living like, oh, I mean, shoot, what was it like 600 years, 900 years? All that then came all the way down. I'm talking about all the way down. So again, we talk about identity and destiny, like understand we're made in his image and in his likeness. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Uh, we got to understand, right? So when we talk about going from curse to bless, like the blessing imparts God's glory. Made in his image and likeness is to reveal his glory, right? Identity and destiny points to, so like knowing God, right? It's essential. We need to know who God is. And that's a lot, a lot of times why we just take it as, oh, you know, kind of like an alternative to, you know what I mean? It's like an option type deal because we don't know who God is, right? And then even at, when you, you find out and you're learning of God, knowing who God is, we got to know ourselves. And that's being, oh, we got to be open and honest with ourselves. Not like, you know what I mean? trying to cover it up, put makeup on it or band-aid on it. We got to be real with ourselves. God knows anyway. The questions we ask ourselves in this, you know, who am I? Who am I? These are the questions like every day we ask, like, who am I? People ask, who am I? We have people in, I don't know, 40, 50, 60, still like, who am I? And where am I going? Type deal. But this, the ancient past, you know, the father, the blessing, right? Reveals these things. The Holy Spirit reveals these things. But who am I? And that's based on, you know, our perception and the value that we see in ourselves. The where am I going? Like, you, you know, asking your purpose, the significance that you have, right? Why am I here? You know, what am I here to do? These are the questions that we ask. I'm gonna tell you, I love Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God. It's like everything starts there. In the beginning, God. Understand, like it starts with true identity in Christ. That's where we should start. True identity in Christ. And we got to stay in the school of the spirit because he reveals the possible, you know, in our limited minds, really in our limited minds. Um, you know, well, it's just that limited, <laughs> you know, that his thoughts and ways are higher than ours, but in the beginning, God, the first four, the four words in the Bible, it starts there. You know, we got to have a mind of Christ, right? Knowing our identity in him. What does God say? Don't even start with yourself. What does God say about me? That's the truth, right? He's the truth. The way, the truth, and right. he is the truth. You know, lies don't have power in the presence of truth. So no matter what people try to attach to your identity or call you the lies that the enemy, right, tries to make you accept a certain identity or a certain destiny, right? No, 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 no. It can't stand in the presence of truth. You know, you cho you're a chosen child of God. You're favored of the Lord. You got to ask God, reveal me to me. I'm going to tell you, I got to the point where I was like, I am sick of me. I'm sick of like going through all this. I'm sick of myself. God, reveal me to me. Your, you know what I mean? Reveal me to me. Uh oh. Reveal me to me. And then we present 
we present, you know, our body as a living sacrifice. You might talking about sacrificial life, going all the way to like selfishness and greed. Like, y'all want you to think about this. We are someone's ancestors. It matters what we do. Decisions determines destiny. That's what life is. We're making decisions constantly. That is what life is. That is what life, I mean, that's what it consists of, right? And we just learn, you know, generation to generation, like sins of the father goes far down. The decisions we make today really affects those who come after us, just like our ancestors, the decision they made affects us, you know, and there's consequences, both good and bad. What will we stand for? That's really the question, like, what will we stand for? And um, really, so I got here at the bottom. So, and you know, knowing God's agenda, what, what do you say, God? You know, what is it that you have planned for me? Did y'all know that we are born with our own star? I don't even know if I, do y'all know that we were born with our own star? Remember Jesus' example, right? Made an image, made his image, made in his likeness. Remember when the, I forget the, not stargazer, but basically like star readers, the wise men, remember when they saw his star? Remember they saw his star and they went on to where, like where he was? right? Followed his star to where he was. They were able to read. Think about it. You have people like nowadays, come on y'all, astrology, all of that witchcraft. It's in, it's, it's in the scripture. No, you know, the fortune tellers, the star astrology, the horoscopes. Think about it. Horror, horror scope, right? We're all born with our own star. Some, you know, brighter than others, but we all have our star and in the world of rich witchcraft, that's basically, you know, the warlocks, witches, wizards, all of them. That's basically what it is. And it's certain things they try to do, try to steal your star. They try to bury your star. They try to kill your star. And when they kill your star, like, that's really it. I hope I'm not like, I don't know. I Like I told you, it's open, honest, transparent as we're given the tea. I just... Y'all stop me, unmute yourself if you, you know, you want to talk or if you have something to share or you have a question, um, you know, I'm just revealing, revealing truth here. And um, just think about it. Remember when um, Joseph, he had the dream. Remember he had the dream and he was like, the 11 stars are going to bow to me type deal. Y'all, they knew what that dream meant. They knew exactly what it meant. Guess what they tried to do, okay? They tried, uh-oh, let's see. Oh, thank you, brother. <laughs> um, they, um, they actually, like they knew what it meant. So in that moment, basically what they were doing is they were trying, first he was in a well, they tried to bury his star. That's exactly what they were trying to do. Look, even that, they talk about killing your own brother. They were talking about killing him. They tried to kill this star. They was like, no, wait, right? Then guess what the last thing they did? They sold him into slavery. They sold his star. God and all his mercifulness. Remember, that even, that those things, wasn't. it wasn't even like, the plan of God, because we know the dream that was revealed. God said what he said. This is God's agenda for his life. He revealed it to him. Yeah, they interpreted it, but Satan's agents, right? And family, no family. We're going to keep it real, right? This is what they did. That was of Satan, but God in all his mercifulness, he, he was with him. He was still with him. You saw how he prospered even the household, what a Potiphar, in the jail, he over the whole jail and all of that, like God was with him. And even when Satan's minions and his agents try to do what they do, like, hey, it will not prevail. No weapon formed against, okay? Like not a one. Um, and even in, in that scripture alone, sometimes, 
you know, we always like quote it, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Sometimes we be the weapon of, uh, you know, that's formed, we form the weapon against ourselves and we don't even like realize that, you know, and that's based on like faulty foundation, something we don't know, right? That we got to check, we need to check, right? Do a thorough examination. But it's like in this instance, um, I'm having a hard time seeing it. Okay. Like in this instance, in this instance here, you know, like he was talking, he like he's, you know, serving God. He was happy about it, you know, never thinking that this was going to be how this played out. But think about it when he was even prospering in the positions that he got into, even that he got into God's, God's agenda, it still prevailed. Think about it. This is another thing that happened. So they sold him and, you know, his star is bright and everything. Even like Potiphar, even not even, let's go even further. When he got out of the, you know, he read the king, was the king emperor's dream and he became, you know, over all of Egypt. Remember that he became over all of G Egypt. It's almost like, you know, how your star is bright, right? And cause those around you to even prosper. When he was in a jail cell and um, he, like wh whoever it was, the one who was, I think it was Potiphar, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was, I know he was over his household before he put him in jail because his wife and all that mess or whatever. But like they were prospering, yet he, look at the condition that he was in, in the jail cell. Think about that for a second. That's a case in point of, your star being stolen. When that happens, when the agents try to steal your star, they be prospering and you be, you know what I mean? Sometimes in the worst of worst conditions, but you're doing, so anyway, I won't like, I know I'm kind of like going over, but I, you know, I just think, I, I really just like be thinking about that. So in regards to this, okay, we need to root ourselves in God's word. We need to root ourselves in God's word and the call to action in regards to identity and destiny. Y'all write down every lie. Scripture says, hold every thought captive, right? Every thought captive. I don't care. They said you this, you that, you won't never amount to nothing. You ain't good for nothing. I don't care what lie the enemy done sent your way. Write it down. And guess what? You need to combat every lie with the truth. What does God say? What does his word say that's found in scripture? And repeat that. Repeat God's word over and over. Speak his word over your life. Speak victory. It is power in that. Now, the gift of dominion, God gave it to us. He said, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Let me tell y'all something. The gift of dominion, discovery of your purpose is truly the greatest discovery. It's truly the greatest discovery in life. Y'all, we were created to have dominion in the earth. We were created to have dominion. Let me tell you, you have faith and you have fear, right? It says, I'm gonna let you know, fear and faith, they don't go together. They can't go together. One has to give way to the other. Faith is of God, we know, and fear is of the devil. It's of Satan himself. God says, I don't know how many times, fear not, do not be afraid. Like he expresses that because you know what, what fear, fear weakens us. Fear allows entrance of evil, right? That's how the attacks come through fear. That's how it, it comes. First John 4 and 18 says perfect love. And we know perfect love is God. Perfect love casts out all, not some all fear. It casts out all fear. Think about this. Here's another one. Job was a righteous, God said himself, righteous, holy, and pleasing to God. 
a lot of time we read like Job went through some stuff, bro. What? What? And then he was holy and righteous and pleasing to God. That was his dude. What? Did y'all know it was fear? It was literally fear that it unraveled like that for Job. And it talks about that in Job 3, um, 25 and 26. In his mind, everything that happened to him, like he was like daily, he was so worried about, you know, something happening to his property or something happening to his family or something happening to his health. The very thing, when we talked about mindset room, that very thing that he didn't want to happen, that he despised, that he feared so much was the very thing that came upon him. That's why we have to renew our mind. Even, I mean, and it wasn't like it was a secret. Even his, you know, his friends or whatever. Um, I don't know if it was in Job 4. I'm not sure. It was later on after that. It was basically like, um, oh, the very thing you feared happened. He told him that. So it was like, it wasn't even no secret how much he feared. But that opens up having fear alone. That's of Satan. That's the enemy. No, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power. We have power, dominion, right? Power, love, and a sound mind. When you choose fear, that's like you trusting in Satan. You, you literally trust in him, choosing fear. Faith is you leaning and you depending on God. Lord, I trust you. I ain't going to lean on my own understanding because I know you are all known and all powerful. I don't care what it looks like in the physical. We talk life is spiritual, right? It opens up. It opens up for attacks. In having dominion, God said, be fruitful, do multiply and have dominion. There's five specific areas. So being fruitful, that means you will not lack. You know that? Being fruitful. You will not lack. There should be no lack in this earth if we really take our dominion. It's a, he says, be fruitful. Just like in, um, and this is based on the seed, right? Because we think about fruit, right? It starts with a seed, right? And it takes time to kind of, you know, I forget the little um horticulture word but you know it takes time as you nurture that seed and then it grows into into fruit right which is the final portion but it's always based on the seed your fruit is based on the seed what type of seed are you planting we know luke 8 11 says the seed is the word of god the word of god is a seed so what are you what are you planting what is the seed that you're planting that's essential to know because again like we talked about the sowing and the reaping so what exactly am i sowing because that's the very thing that's going to come about do multiply right this is about procreation and a lot of people they say don't you know multiply sometimes we just you know to like kids you know like oh based on procreation for male and female you know having children but that's not all it's about our gifts and our callings right that is what it's about it's about our gifts and callings and let me tell you something and we'll talk about you know the earth in a little bit it's about our gift and calling but you better believe that enemy and that's why what we see now about them multiplying the enemy strategy most things he's destroying most things he's destroying because we have yet to take our rightful place. Lord tells us, be fruitful, do multiply and have dominion. Even when it says like replenish and subdue, what's most things that we see like, you know, in the earth now, so like so much hate and violence and oh, just like so much evil wickedness, right? The replenishing and subdue, like subdue means to like, you know, like to cultivate, to the power to bring under subjection and order. Like that is what the initial, like replenish and subdue. Why don't we start sowing, you know, in righteousness, more love, more, more faith, more hope. Like, you know, what was the original like intent, right? God's original intent. And then having dominion, y'all, that's about dominating the earth dominating the earth on behalf of the kingdom of heaven that is what it's about you know we had absolute 
absolute dominion before the fall. You know what I mean? For what happened in the garden. We had absolute dominion. Like this was supposed to be a place of, you know what I mean? Like the communion with God, everything good and lovely and pure and just an extension of heaven. That is what, it, you know, was supposed to be like the absolute dominion. This is what he said. And then over the five areas, as you see here, dominion over the fish of the sea. Listen, and it's not specific to saying like fish. No, have dominion over the sea, complete dominion. Having dominion over the sea, which is the marine kingdom, right? And then it says the fowl of the air, which is not just, you know, just saying the fowl, of the air, of the air, and, you know, of the animal kingdom, also earth, right? Earth, and then every living thing, is like, you know, the little creepy crawler, uh, one of reptiles, I guess, what you want to call them. Um, but those are the areas that we're supposed to have dominion over. Those are the areas we're supposed to have dominion over. And it's about binding and loosing those things. Like it's time to take our rightful place and tap into the blessings that God has already prepared for us it really is time time to bind and loose it's time we bind and loose i don't care what the enemy had no you gotta loose me from this right you gotta loose me from this all right and so this is our final and this whoo our little bonus here so we already talked about technology y'all know how we like our technology amen amen how we like our um Techn I don't know why I just showing Casey for everything. I did something weird on my um, end. Um, but powerful, ancient, spiritual technology. Y'all, our spoken word is so powerful. Like how we talked about God made us, he created us in his image and his likeness. And we already know when God spoke, it came to be. And it was good, y'all. He said it was good when he spoke, it came to be. Spoken words create. Spoken words create. And you know what? Something that's essential to know is that spoken words always come before the creation of something. You have to speak that thing into existence. You have to speak it into existence. The unseen realm is real, y'all. Think about it. God is spiritual, right? So that would be just, just so in, I don't know, denial. God is spiritual. This earth was created by God. So we communicate to him in which way? You think it's just the physical, the fleshly way? No, it's a spiritual realm, right? Spiritual. And then more so on uh, Genesis 1, 11 and 25, it goes, in. think about this. God spoke things, let there be light. And it was light. He said it was good, y'all. He said it was good, right? He said it was good. On the sixth day, God stopped speaking. He literally stopped speaking. Um, the sixth day was when man was created, right? Right? He stopped speaking to the earth because during that time, you know what I mean? He was speaking the first, what, five days he was speaking to the earth. Let there be light. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. On the earth, he said, let there be light. And there was light. God was speaking, literally speaking to the earth. Deuteronomy 32, one, give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Y'all, that means the earth can hear, y'all. The earth can hear. This is ancient, powerful ancient spiritual technology. So on the sixth day was when he stopped speaking. You know, he created man. Remember, that was the last time he stopped because guess what? Remember Adam? Body of dust, right? He was made from the dust and created right that houses his spiritual being but think about it like man originated from the earth it's our legal 
resident here. That's why we need to learn how to take dominion. We are legal residents here. Created our origination is from the dirt, right? From the dust is how we created. It's how we learn how, hey, oh earth, like here, the words in my mouth. We don't, we don't, we don't use that anymore. When I found this, they just kind of like blew my mind. I'm just gonna be honest. I was like, holy spirit, you better speak, man. You better speak. Y'all, this is like having like a spiritual, uh, I don't even know how to say it. Like, you know, I was saying like, you mean tell me you took a AK-47 to a night fight? No, no, no. This is like a spiritual nuclear arsenal <laughs> for that shift, y'all, for a supernatural shift, right? It is a prophetic act to speak to the earth. The earth, which is life-sustaining in itself, right? It is life-sustaining in itself. We can command and we can demand the earth to yield its fruit to us to bring prosperity and take authority over the enemy, like rid all of his plans, any plans, manipulation, plot, scheme, ploy, deception, manipulation, all of that that he's placed against our destiny we have a legal right. We have to walk in our spiritual authority, right? As children of the Lord, like we need the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, right? The throne, we are the throne of the Holy Spirit. That's what connects us, right? Connects us to heaven. You know, this outer shell, this, you know, this little container it's only what house it's what houses our spirit because we already know like you know what i mean when the blood stops flowing because the life is in the blood when the blood stops flowing when you know take our last breath we're no more legal we have no more legal rights here on the earth right no no more it's it's our very physical body that allows us to be vessels and use for the kingdom of God, but we have to take our spiritual authority in it, even in with the gift of dominion, there should be no more lack. It's so unfortunate because we have a, a scarcity. We walk around with a scarcity mindset. Y'all, we have the power and the authority to reset economies, right? That are being destroyed even now from the world to God's economy, to God's economy, his economic system, just by this ancient spiritual technology that like some have never even heard of, right? Remember how, um, so reverse cycles of curses and iniquity. Think about it, we'll go all the way back. When Cain murdered his brother, Abel, you remember how it says, um, you know, he asked him, what have you done? Like, I hear your, your, I hear Abel's blood, your brother's blood crying. I hear it calling out from the earth. Again, it has ears. I hear it crying out. Your, the blood of your brother is crying out. The land became cursed. And you remember Cain was cursed. It wasn't God that cursed him. The earth is what cursed Cain. It wasn't God. It was the earth, the blood of his brother. It was the earth. Remember he, the, um, how do you say it? Like the womb, the, I think it, the womb of the earth is how it explained. And that's why they call it mother earth too, y'all. Think about it womb just like a woman has a womb the ability to bring forth the earth also has the ability to bring forth to bring that harvest you know it talks about and i'm not for sure like the mouth to remember um who is this but i want to say moses remember the what were their names cora cora the cora family or something remember that was all in Moses stuff straight tripping causing havoc causing chaos and confusion Mo Moses was sick of it like they got all people like you know what I mean talking smack and everything they was wild and you know what Moses told him to say 
um, may this not continue. May the may she may the earth may she open her mouth and swallow them whole. Remember the ground open and swallow them all of them whole. The earth, y'all, it is power in that. It is power in that. Think about it. So when I talk about resetting economies, do y'all remember the widow and then prophet Elijah? Remember he came into the town and that widow, I don't know if she was at the gate or something, but she was out, she was out getting something. I don't know. She was saying that all she had was flour to make a like small cake or something and her and her son were going to die or something like that. Like they were just making a last meal and they're just going to call it quit. So God, you know, had sent um, the prophet Elijah, this was in first Kings 17, 10 through 16. Right. And so basically like she, how she was like the scarcity mindset, you know, had the lack, like she was like in the physical, this is all I see type deal. This is all we had. Like, this is our last meal. She had already set her mind on that. And you know, what did Elijah tell her? You know, first he asked her, actually asked her to bring him some water. And as she was going, he was like, bake me a cake too and bring it back. She's like, wait, all I got is a little bit of flour. I don't know about that type deal. But he was like, do, you know, just, you know, do what I ask and I'm going to show you. He was like, your, your, um, I don't want to say cup or something like cup, whatever. It will not go dry. You, until the end of this famine season ceases, you will always have, you will not lack. And because of her moving in faith, it was just as God said, just as the prophet Elijah revealed to her, they had, it doesn't matter what it looks like in the physical, right? The fact that she moved in faith, y'all, obedience is better than sacrifice. Oh, the fact that she was obedient, like it reset the whole, she didn't lack nothing. It wasn't no scarcity, like scarcity, nothing at all, like just her being obedient to his word. So y'all know how, and um, like, it's really time for us to speak to the earth. Psalms 24, one says the earth is the Lord's, right? And the fullness thereof says the world and they that dwell therein. A lot of times we just think it's talking about the people, but the simple fact that the earth is the Lord, meaning he owns it, baby, and he knows all about it. He is the creator, right? A lot of time that scarcity mindset, y'all know how they was wild and out of acting a fool at the beginning of COVID, everybody hoarded everything, like, you know, that scarcity mindset. I be doing if I go without it. I need all this lifestyle, all this toilet paper, like they tripping, you know, and a lot of times that's kind of what they do, like, you know what I mean? That's the whole agenda systemically, you know, to act like is, you know, resources are scarce. But this is the fullness of, that means resources, the visible, the invisible, like the natural, the chemical, all of the minerals, right? In the earth, the fullness thereof. There is no lack in God's economy. Don't you know he knows everything? And think about it. Everything that's created, I don't care your cell phone, your laptop, your car, your house, all the resources came from the earth. Every resource came from the earth. Scientific, chemical, all that came from the earth. Every last bit of it, right? It just took divine revelation, right? You know, God given, even God gives the idea to like, you know, the revelation. We always say, oh, I came with that myself. He gives the revelation. Somebody got to think of, you know, we have cell phones not that long ago. <laughs> now it's popping. Everybody walking around with a hand in their phone. We have it before, but it took somebody having a vision, right? That dream, that, that, that idea. And the thing is like, like, I don't think we're not lacking in resources at all. I think it's like the willing vessels, right? Because he even says like, you know, many, um, many are called, but few are chosen, right? That's even the word, but he's called and ordained us to bear fruit. I think a lot of times we lack, you know, maybe the revelation of it more so than anywhere and that's where it comes into play where we need to you know have that superior belief system so a lot of times we cross x ourselves out before we even get started 
it's like, oh, you know, deal with this type deal. And then when it says the world, you know, the earth is Lord and the fullness thereof in the world. So we already know the who dwell in it, which is the people, it's, it's us, right? But the world, it was never supposed to be all chaotic. You know, his his plan, his, it's about system, it's about order. Everything should be done decently and in order. That is what the word says, right? Honestly, all that we ever need to fulfill our God-given destiny in the kingdom of heaven is here. Just needing that revelation, that idea, like God is the one who even instills that desire that's already in us. That dream, like that dream or that like, I don't know what I should be doing. It's already inside of you. you Gotta ask Holy Spirit, you know, to reveal, you know, like I said, God, show me to me. Introduce me to me. You know what I mean? And like there's no limitations with him. Simple. It's unlimited resources. There is absolutely no lack. I'm going to tell you what we do have is greed. It's how we read greed and mismanagement of resources. You know, you got the, I don't know, the top percent. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. That's never how he intended it. Hoard, you know, hoard and, you know, go through the little loopholes to get this and that. It's mismanagement. That's the issue. It shouldn't be poverty. There is no lack, you know, and a lot of things they do now, population control. Oh, well, you know, because of this, you don't know what's all in the earth, the unlimited resources that God has. Only God knows, but they play out this agenda and their limited mindset. And we got to realize everything that affects the earth, it impacts the world right? Again, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. But, you know, the natural effects of prosperity, you know, sometimes limits from even fulfilling destiny, like all of this. Philippians 4, 19 says that God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ. Not some. He said all. He said all. And y'all, it is time. I'm going to tell you, the strength of prayer is that we have our solid foundation, right, of the word of God, we have to use, and look, a lot of times people be like, well, I got to find a prophet that'll speak over me, speak life, use the word of God, prophesy over yourself, you don't need another man, like, prophets the word that is what it's there for like i said we're going to talk about prophecy on the third day but that is exactly what it is there for we got to speak life not curses or limiting belief you know over ourselves the land responds to the words that we create so if it's always man hang on you can't do no you know what i'm saying like nah i don't even think that's for me that's exactly how it's gonna go your words you know what i mean you speaking curses over yourself limiting beliefs that is what's gonna follow it's just i mean it's that's just it is what it is as a man thinketh his heart so is he not you shall be that's what because guess what if you thinking in lack, you ain't gonna take the necessary steps to walk out your vision walk out your dream you know what i mean that god has for you're not gonna do that because in your mind you like you already you know what i mean pull the cord before you even got started before you even got started and i'm gonna tell you god will not do for us what he has already told us to do for ourselves on the sixth day when he created man he transferred okay period he transferred transferred that dominion and that authority that power power in the spoken word to be able to speak to the earth and it bring forth it can swallow your problems right and it can bring forth your prosperity it's a must that we do that you know, if we talk about, you know, that dream house you've been looking to, that career you've been looking to, like whatever you need from the earth, like participate in the miracle of it. You got to know how to speak that. So as I end up and wrap up here, the call to action for this is this. You need to repent. We have to repent first before speaking to the earth. We already talked about faulty foundations, right? We need to, you know what I mean? We have to have all of those evil covenants, all of that, whether known or known, but that we're under, right? Because we said principle, it's all about law. You know what I mean? Beyond a reason that, like, even though you know, ignorance doesn't mean that you're free from it. 
that you're free from curses that have been placed on you. Our ancestors, again, faulty foundation. So we have to repent. You know what I mean? Lord, you know what I mean? Forgive me and, you know, for my sins and the sins of my ancestors that came before me, you know, and speak it back eight generations, like speak that things that I didn't know of, Father God, you know what I mean? Ask him for forgiveness before you even take on the practice of this. And when you do, and speak into the earth, I need you to take soil from the ground, right? Outside your home or, you know what I mean? In your yard, I don't know, at your job. You need to take some soil from the ground and you need to speak faith-filled words to the earth. I'm talking about pray and prophesy, decree those things. You ask the earth to open its mouth, right? And swallow all evil covenants, altars, curses, witchcraft, you know what I mean? All of that. You need that release. You need a release against you in the name of Jesus, right? And we know, and this was something I didn't um, mention even before. So I talked about, you know, how the ground was cursed because, you know, when Cain killed Abel and his blood, you know, was crying out from the earth. When Jesus, his blood, life is in the blood. When Jesus, remember, even him, a garden of Gethsemane, he was praying even to the point of sweating blood that dropped and touched the earth. Even before he even got to the cross, even before he got to the cross, it was in that his blood touching the earth that he released the curse from the earth, right? He blessed it. So it was reversing that cycle of curse and iniquity with his blood. And we already know, Lord, when you pray, may your blood speak for me, Father, right? May the blood of Jesus speak for me. It carries a sound, y'all. It carries a sound. We got to know that and understand that it carries a sound. And the words say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, right? When you take your rightful position, you get up and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You pray over yourself and you know what you do? After that, you're going to put the soil that's in your hand, put it back to the earth beneath your feet. You're going to put the soil that's in your hand and just pray, put it back, put, put it back to the earth beneath your feet. And you're going to live in anticipation and see see the earth shift in your favor. It's one of the technologies that we don't use, that we rarely use. And let me tell you, it's powerful. You better believe you got these witches out here. Honey, they talking to the earth. They know this and that. Lord, may you open up and swallow them whole. Anybody's put a curse against my destiny, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We gotta pray these prayers. I'm telling you, it changes the game. And stop waiting on heaven because it's already here, okay? Where it says your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Like it is in heaven on earth. That means we ain't gotta wait till we get to heaven to experience it. We can experience it right now. I love that. Yes, on the inside of you. Yes, yes, yes. Let me tell you, we live in a kingdom driven by mystery. We've been talking about what's hidden right in plain sight. God's children, y'all, we have the gift and the calling to influence the earth, right? Using our power, our principles, we can change the trajectory of the, the culture for the kingdom of heaven, right? Let me tell you, God never begins anything on earth unless it's already finished in heaven. Remember, before it's even manifested on earth, it's already taken place in heaven. Remember, it always starts with in the beginning, God. Those very first four words, in the beginning, God. Y'all, the T is, we didn't ask, like ask for the ancient past, right? We went over there, asked for the ancient past. Second Chronicles 7, 13, 14 says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then 
will I hear from heaven and heal their land. We definitely need a healing in the land. Remember his principle, his word, right? Which is true, it's alive, it's active. He honors his word even like above his name. Scripture even says that. And we know his name reveals his nature and his very character. He honors his word, right? His law, his law, okay? And always remember that anything is like a, a suddenly, we you know, it's like a suddenly, that's just really earth's not yet, right? That's when earth's not yet, not quite. It means heaven's already done. Again, it's already done in heaven, right? And finally, y'all stand firm in your power and your authority. Know that fa your faith is being strengthened in and throughout this in and throughout this, there is no fear, have no fear to get to the root of it. It's important that we do. Be excited about it, right? Be excited about it to experience full restoration and a radical transformation in your life that's going to change your very world and those around you. And that concludes our day one of Kingdom Secrets. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You guys